Can I help? Special delivery for Patton. Oh, the C64 Mini. Yeah, I've heard of that. I'm not interested. Thank you. But it's the only one you don't have. You have to review it. Listen, I didn't have one of these growing up, so I don't have any feelings toward it. I've never even played one. But you owe it to your viewers. You're the classics guy. You even did a video on the Commodore 64 for the SNES Classic. Yeah, did you see that video? It sucked. It was all over the place and I had no idea what I was doing. Then you leave me no choice. YouTube magic. Well, I guess I'm stuck with this. So the Commodore 64 Mini, this released here in the States October 9th. Um, it originally retailed about $70. I got mine from Walmart for like $50, a little over $50. It comes with 64 games, one controller, and it outputs to HDMI and 720p. Never played a Commodore 64, so I don't really know what to expect with this. I do know the original came out in 1982 and it was the best-selling single computer of all time. It was a lot more popular in the European countries than it was in the US, although in the US it was still very popular. And it gets its name because of the 64 kilobytes of RAM that the computer had included when it came out. 64 kilobytes. That was killer back then. This was actually in competition with the original Nintendo in the European country, so it's supposedly a heavy hitter. So how about we get this thing out of the box? Where's my knife? Who moved my knife? Which one? Wait, hold on. So here we are, the C64 Mini plugs into your TV with an included HDMI cable. AC adapter not included. That seems to be a popular thing nowadays. E for everybody, world's best-selling home computer, reborn, 64 games. What else do we got? Some features. High definition output at 720p via HDMI. Pixel perfect display with US and Europe display modes and CRT filter options. Save game function. Two USB ports. Plug in a USB keyboard and use as a home computer with C64 basic or add a second joystick for two player games. Support software updates via USB flash drive. Software updates, awesome. On the back we have a list of the games. I don't know any of these. Well, I kind of do, just not on this system. Boulder Dash, California Games, Impossible Mission 2, Impossible Mission? Jumpman, just to name a few. We'll take a look at those in a second, but for now, let's get this sucker out of the box. Ooh, very nice. We have a box within a box. This is Boxception. Box and when we open the second box, here is our C64 Mini and our controller. Very nice. Apparently the system is 50% smaller than the original. Let's grab the controller as well. USB controller. Lots of buttons. Two fat ones right here. This joystick in the middle. Triangle buttons. And a bunch down here. This looks like a menu button, if I had to guess. Take this film off. There we go. That's the shine I'm looking for on my joysticks. So not having had an original Commodore 64, don't know how accurate this controller is to whatever came out back then, but it's got plenty of buttons for an 8-bit system, so we'll see how this works. We dig deeper, seems that we have our HDMI cable. I have so many of these now. All these systems I've bought, I have a million HDMI cables. Power cable, one side USB and the other micro USB. Got the C64 Mini Quick Guide, and it looks like an advertisement for something called Retro Reborn, the world's first retro game subscription service. Antstream.com, okay. Promo code, that could be worth looking into. As for the system itself, uh, this is not a real keyboard. It is cosmetic, but that's kind of cool because I'm assuming this is what it looked like back in the day. Got some F keys over here. 
all your regular non-function keys on this side. Got a little power light in the top right corner to indicate when the system is turned on. I do like that. On the rear is simply a power input and HDMI output. And then on the right side you have your two USB ports and your power button. So like they mentioned on the box you can use this second USB port for two player games. You can also plug in your own keyboard to work with the system and use that C64 basic. And it has some support for a USB drive which I will get into later. Didn't mention this before but this comes to us from Retro Games Limited. They do caution you to use a certified 5 volt 1 amp output AC adapter. And then we have the controller layout. You have the directional stick in the middle, left and right fire buttons, TL and TR, not sure what those mean, A, B and C buttons, and then the menu button. So there you go. That is everything that comes with the C64 Mini. Let's fire it up and take a look at the menu and some games. Okay, so starting it up for the first time, you're given the language selection screen. But before anything, I need a comment about this music. I'm loving this music. This is insane. It sounds so good. So using the controller, I like that little boop sound. All right, we're going to select English. I think I hit the fire button to select. Oh, had to hit the menu button to select. All right, so we're greeted with this interface. This looks pretty nice. I like that you have the box art for the game at the bottom. You have your screenshot, description of the game, author, composer, the genre, the year it was released. This is a really, really detailed and nice menu. And your screenshot changes as well. What does Anarchy have to give us? It looks like it shows you the title screen as well as a screenshot of the game. That is really cool. Hitting the menu button on the screen does not do anything. If I hit the C button though, it'll mute the music. Why would you want to do that? Don't hit that C button. It appears the A and B buttons do not do anything here either. If I hit down, I go to the screen options where I can choose between the displays. And we have six. We have Pixel Perfect, European 4.3, North American 4.3, North American 4.3 with a CRT filter, European 4.3 with a CRT filter, and Pixel Perfect CRT. So it looks like the bottom row just adds a CRT filter to the top row's options. Hitting the menu button will take us back to the menu. If we select this middle option, that takes us back to our language selection. And the last option, I believe, is the system option. You have USB keyboard, legal notices, system information, and factory reset. Factory reset should reset all your options back to before you started using the system. Let's look at the USB keyboard option. Oh, this appears to let you select what region of keyboard you have. That is very useful. That, they were really thinking about everybody with this. If we go down to legal notices, it talks about the legal notices. Hitting over takes us to the GL IBC license page. System information will give you the build, the build dates, and whether or not you have a firmware update on a USB stick. The firmware updates can be found on their website and they encourage you to use them. So that's everything you get with the menu. Let's take a look. We have 64 games here to pick from as well as C64 Basic. Let's read about Basic real quick. The beginner's all-purpose symbolic instruction code is a procedural programming language and was designed to be easy to use. The original C64 computer included a variant of Basic which is available here. Please visit that website for more information on learning the program in Basic on the C64. Very nice of them to include that on this system. I really like this menu and I like this carousel. I think all the game details is absolutely awesome. Very cool, very impressive. Jumpman, I've heard of that game. We're gonna try some Jumpman. I'm gonna hit the fire button. Okay, depress one through five to select game option. One through five. I don't have a one through five on here. Oh, there we go. I hit the right trigger. Not exactly sure how this controller will get you into the game. That was kind of weird. All right, so easy does it. Player one. Oh, that took me back. That was the wrong button to hit. Well, while we're in the game, if I hit the menu button, you get the save and load game options. Oh, and you do have a virtual keyboard. Very good. So let's go to save and load first. If we hit the fire button, you get four save slots. Very nice. And it shows you at the bottom there what each of the four face buttons do if you were to hit it. If I hit the D button or the menu button, that'll take us back. The first button will save 
and the third button will load. Back one screen, hit that menu button one more time, take a look at this virtual keyboard. There it is over on the side. And like I said, you can also plug in your own keyboard to have this same effect. Okay, we are, whoa, okay, we are a very uh, fast moving jump man. And we've died. So let's take it easy with this joystick, I guess. Okay. Oh, a double shot. Okay, maybe I don't quite understand how this game works. I can jump, hopefully. Can I shoot also? I can't jump. Oh, I'm a jump man who can't jump. Maybe this game is too much for me. Or does up jump? Maybe up is our jump? Up is not our jump. I don't know what is jump. Time to try something else. Oh, there's a jump man too. I'm sure I'll do just as fine with that one. Let's see if I can find a game I actually recognize. Okay, well I don't recognize anything else. There was California games there, but I'm not about to try that. What did I pick? I don't even remember what game I picked. Press fire to start. Oh, jeez. Well, the controls are already much easier. Am I that? I'm a little dude with a hat. Oh, and he's moving. These graphics are actually really nice for an 8-bit console. So if I go over here and I hit fire, is it anything? I can jump by pushing up. That's good. I guess we just need to go through this gate. Or not. Oh, there, oh there's a wizard. Okay, can I hide behind here from the wizard? No. He, he just, he's all, all up on me. Is the wizard bad? Do I just need to run away from the wizard? I can jump over the wizard. What is that up there? What does that mean? I can't fire anything. I can look down. I just need a moment. Can I have a moment of your time? Oh, is that a skull? Am I dying? I feel like this is going to get bad. Oh, I went through the door. Finally. Okay. I don't know if that was my fault. Stars? Are stars good? I'm just trying to push down. This uh, joystick is a little rough to work with. I have failed to assemble the final chapter. The land is doomed. Oh. Here's a uh, C64 Hall of Fame. This is a massive thanks to all those who influenced or backed the C64. Your enthusiasm has kept the original computer alive, inspiring us at Retro Games Limited to bring the fun and excitement back in a smaller modern format. Please regularly visit the website for full game instructions and expanded user manual. I may have to use that just because I don't understand the controls of some of these games. Oh, these must be the backers. This is so nice of them to do. And here's that sweet, sweet music again. Spin Dizzy. I think I played a version of this on the Super Nintendo. Um, don't remember how to play this. But yeah, I think I... Oop. Wait, what's going on? I think I played something like this on Super Nintendo or Nintendo. Well, that didn't go... Well, uh, um, okay. Alright, why do I keep going up? I'm hitting the other way. Oh, now that goes that way. This is like Qbert controls. Go! Well, it's not like Qbert controls. Oh, I didn't even do anything that time. Okay, go! Nope, not that way. Oh, okay, this um joystick is, is kind of funny. Alright, so that's not that's not diagonal down. That is. Oh. What if I hold oh and we started on the ramp, so we slid down. What if I do that? Oh, that is faster, okay. But we want to go the Yes! Oh, no, I didn't want that. Alright. Oh, man. This is, um... Okay. That's fine. Spin. Nope. Um, I thought that was left. Okay. Up here. That's fine. I don't mind that. And go! Oh. Let's try that again. Oh, back down we go. And into the water. Okay. Nope. Not that way. Here we... Oh, nope. Not that way. Almost. Spin dizzy. I'm gonna get this. Hold on. Get... There. Nope. Almost. Hold on. One more. Get... Okay, maybe we need to back up some. Back up? Nope. Okay. Almost. I feel there we... Oh, boy. Uh-oh. Oh, so we don't want to do that. Is that it? Oh, mission aborted. I think the game felt sorry for me. Well, I'm not great at Commodore 64. But there you go. Just a little showcase of the games included with the C64 Mini. It looks like there's a lot of games here. Probably something for everybody. I didn't do a very good job of showing them off, sorry. All right, so the C64 Mini, not too bad. If I have one complaint, it'll be this right here. I don't think it was just me playing really bad on those games. I think maybe there are some issues with this controller and the directions I was pushing, like I, I swore I was pushing up on this and on that last game I was trying to play, I was going like super left. 
So the system can probably use a little bit better of a controller besides this one. I haven't tested any other controllers that I have with it yet to see if they're compatible. I don't know how they would work. Or maybe those games are just better played with a keyboard. Also, some of the challenges I was having with the games are mostly due to my inexperience with the games not knowing what to do. If I had a better understanding of how those games worked, I probably could have done better with them. But I think 64 games is a huge amount. It seems like the games aren't just your basic push start and go games. It looks like some of them have some depth to them, so that's nice. But I do think there is a lot of potential here, especially of those who did grow up with the console. I think this probably does a pretty good job of letting you relive those memories. Maybe not with this controller, but if that can be replaced, then I think overall this will be a pretty good system. One of the better qualities about this system, I thought, was that menu music. That was catchy, it was really nice, and it got me pumped for whatever else the system had for me. But I think the main thing that drives this system is this right here. Retro Games released an update, I believe this past Christmas or right before Christmas, that allows you to use your USB flash drive and add more games to the system. No other mini system has offered this yet and they've given you the basic, you know, 20 or 30 games included with the system. But these guys come out and say, hey, you want more games on your system? Here you go. Merry Christmas. And I think that's wonderful. I think that is a great idea. And you can tell from the effort these guys put into this system, they actually really cared about it. It wasn't just something they wanted to throw out and make money on. Obviously, you know, that's the end goal, but they took their time with it. They included so many little things. This system has a lot of care put into it, more so than maybe any of the other retro systems that I've covered. But this needs to be fixed. This is probably the biggest flaw of the system is this controller. So I think I have a little bit more I can cover with this system. I want to do some tests with other controllers. I think there's other third party controllers you can buy for this system. And again, I want to take a look at their way of adding more games to it and see how that works, if it's difficult or not. I think that's actually really important and the main selling point of the C64 Mini. Somebody like me who has no nostalgia for this system at all Comparing it to the other mini systems, I think it's a really good competitor. Maybe not at the $70 price, but I've been finding it all over the place for about $50, $55. And the fact that these guys give you an option to add more games really, really adds to the value of it. So in my opinion, this is a really fun system and I think it is worth the $50. I read up a little bit on it and it's gotten some backlash and I'm not really sure why. I know it wasn't as popular over here in the States, but I think once you get a better controller, this system is a huge sell. I'm really behind this system. I haven't looked into the hardware specs or anything like that or how good the emulation would be on it, but I'll look into it some and I'll save that for another video. So there you go, the C64 Mini. I recommend it personally. I think it's a pretty nice system. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Okay. I'm supposed to be here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no nostalgia for this system at all. Comparing it to the other... <clears throat> Comparing it to the other many systems, it's supposed to sound kind of stupid. That's fine. Special delivery for Patton. I like that one better. I'm just trying to play the game, and I can't get past picking what bratty kids I want on my team. And opening this box, and 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 when we open the second box. Listen, I didn't have one of these growing up, so I have no feelings toward it, so... What was it? Damn. Getting carpal tunnel from holding this joystick up all the time. Oh, man. Well, I guess it's mine. Well, I guess it's mine. Or I guess I'm stuck with this. That's a good one. Don't well, guess. I guess I'm stuck with this, huh? Sorry. So, this controller maybe could use a little bit better. So, we could maybe... So, the system can probably use a little bit better of a controller. I would probably just need a little bit more. Oh, that looks cool. Robin of the Wood. What? Mm. Now I'm going to like toss it back at you. Okay. So you're going to hand it to me. I'm going to say the line, then toss it back. Okay. You even did a video on the Commodore 64 on the SNES Classic. Did you forget about that? <laughs> Sorry. 
Still going? Still going, okay. Well, I guess I'm stuck with it. Hello. What's he doing? Because Johnny's doing a skit. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I <laughs> no. thought you were saying hello. No, he was I done. You locked yourself. No. Out. <laughs> no.